Hey guys, D Mensch Master Studios here. How y'all doing? For me personally, when it comes to Ninjago, I think that after season six with Skybound, the villains we got when it came to Ninjago really weren't that great, all things considered. Like Yang, when it came to him, I thought the execution of his character really wasn't that great, despite having a really good concept, actually, like a villain who's introduced earlier on in the show who then has a bigger role later on. That's a cool idea. The Time Twins, I thought, were just alright characters, but weren't too notable. I really, really don't like Harumi. I think that she is the worst character in the entirety of the show. Iron Baron, I thought, was once again just an okay villain. The Omega, in my opinion, is the most boring and basic character in the entirety of the show. Asphira is once again just another okay villain. And just like in the case of Yang, when it comes to the Ice Emperor, I like the concept for the Ice Emperor, with it being like a ninja who's turned evil, the execution, not as much. Yeah, for me personally, after Skybound, we didn't really get that many great villains, honestly, when it came to Ninjago, with none of them really being better than just okay at best, in my personal opinion. Like, Nauticon was the last great villain we had had when it came to the show. But when it came to the Ice Chapter, Things changed, actually. Things changed in a big way with the introduction of General Vex. Vex, in my personal opinion, is one of the best villains in the entirety of the show and is by far the best villain we have gotten since Nauticon, honestly. In today's video, I just wanted to go over why Vex is such a great villain. Let's get into the whole thing. One of the things that I really like about Vex is all the deception that's around him, mainly due to the fact that, well... He's just called General Vex, and during the build-up um, to season 11, that's all we thought he was going to be. He was just going to be a general, like Samukai, Kozu, or Cryptor, and there really wouldn't have been anything too notable about him. I really like this deception on LEGO's part, because if he was just called Vex, then I think that would have maybe given away that this guy might have had some kind of bigger role instead of him just being a general. But and that's not what LEGO did. They called him General Vex, and when Vex made his first ever appearance in the Ice Chapter, you could definitely tell that Vex was going to be a lot different compared to the other generals we have gotten in the past, and when it came to Vex, he was definitely going to be something special. And oh my gosh, he was definitely something special and very different compared to the other generals we have gotten. Another thing that I really like when it comes to Vex is honestly his backstory. I think it's something pretty interesting because Vex is the first real villain we had gotten in a while who actually has some kind of explicit backstory where we know a lot about him. And it's very interesting, especially considering how it actually connects him to the heroes of the Ice Chapter. As we learn in the episodes Last of the Formlings, and especially in Corruption, Vex was actually originally from the Formling tribe, but he was unable to find his animal form, which caused him to become extremely paranoid, fearful, and angry towards the world, and he was ultimately called Vex the Formless, and he went into self-exile because he believed that everyone hated him, when in actuality, no one did. And it wasn't until Vex found Zane where things changed in a big way, because once Vex found Zane, he manipulated him into becoming the Ice Emperor, and basically turned Zane into a puppet, essentially, allowing Vex to just do whatever he wanted, essentially, and ultimately resulted in, in well, him taking over the Never Realm, him basically wiping out the Yeti population, save for Krag, and committing frozen genocide, freezing and essentially killing a ton of innocent people all across the Never Realm. With the most prominent example obviously being the Formling Village, his own home village that he was just attacking and couldn't care less about what he was doing leaving Akita as the one and only survivor when she was just a little girl, giving her, in my personal opinion, the darkest and most tragic backstory to any character in the entirety of the show. And when it comes to backstories, again, it's interesting to see just how Vex is connected to the major heroes of the Ice Chapter. Because, again, Vex was the one who found Zane and turned him into the Ice Emperor, and there's the other one of Akita, with it being the fact that they are both from the Formling tribe, so they have that connection there. It's definitely something pretty interesting. Another thing that I really like when it comes to Vex is the connections to Season 11's overall message. Season 11's main overall message that it has is just, there are going to be people who will abuse your trust, and it's going to be up to you to determine what you're going to do about that. Are you going to be like Asphira and Vex who dwell on the trust issues and let it ultimately destroy you, becoming just angry towards the world? 
Or are you going to be like Lori and Akita, who were able to overcome their trust issues, learn to trust people again, and are able to make genuine bonds with people again? Again, it's something pretty interesting to see when it comes to Vex, and there's also the whole, like, mini story arc that they have going on during the Ice Chapter, where Akita and Loy, to an extent, are basically worried they could end up becoming just like Vex, and by the end of the Ice Chapter, they don't because they were able to overcome their trust issues and become better people, unlike Vex, who just dwelled on it all and it ultimately destroyed him in the end. Another thing that I really like when it comes to Vex is actually his punishment. I know a lot of people say that when it comes to Vex, he should have been locked up, but for me personally, I think that Vex getting banished is actually a really, really good idea when it comes to his punishment. For starters, it sets him up to potentially return at some point, and that's something I think would be really great to see. But the other big thing when it comes to Vex being banished is because it's a coming full circle type thing when it comes to him, actually. Because remember where Vex was prior to the events of Season 11 starting. Vex went into self-exile because he was paranoid, fearful, and angry towards the world, and he believed that everyone hated him. Take that in comparison to how Vex is by the end of the Ice Chapter. After taking over the Never Realm and installing all this fear, paranoia, hatred, and anger into the world, he's being banished because everyone does hate him. In both situations, Vex went into exile because of himself. In the first situation, he went into self-exile, because again, he thought that everyone hated him, and when it came to the end of the Ice Chapter, he's going into exile because everyone does hate him, and it's not his choice. That's definitely something pretty interesting. And again, I really like this decision, actually. And finally, one last and pretty big reason as to why I really like Vex, actually. And this is something that you may not pick up on the first time you watch the Ice Chapter, but if you rewatched a few more times, this is something that you'll find to be pretty interesting. In every scene where Vex is actually the general... Vex is always in control of the situation every single time. Just think about it. The first time we ever see Vex is during the first ever episode of the Ice Chapter, where he tells the Ice Emperor about the ninja arriving in the village. And the Ice Emperor has the idea to send out his Blizzard Samurai in order to just attack the village. And it's Vex who gives him the idea to attack the ninja. It's not actually the Ice Emperor who comes up with this idea. And this leads on with the idea that, again, Vex knows more than what he's laying on, but also, again, he's the one who's really in control of the situation, not the Ice Emperor. That's definitely an interesting idea. There's then the moment into where Grimfax returns with his forces after the attack on the village, and Vex tells the Ice Emperor that Grimfax and his forces failed, when in actuality, they didn't, and they did in fact put out the fire. Yes, Kai was able to relight it, but still, Grimfax did technically succeed, and Vex says that they didn't. This thing causes the Ice Emperor to just torture Grimfax, and you can see the absolute joy on Vex's face. He loves seeing people suffer and get punished even when they don't need to. Again, you can tell just how much Vex is really, really enjoying this moment. We then get a really interesting moment when Loy is captured. Once Loy is captured, he starts talking to Zing, trying to convince him to just turn back into the way he is and stop being the Ice Emperor. And in this moment, we actually see Vex start to lose control in this moment, because Lloyd knows who Zane is. This is something that Vex never thought would ever happen, and he realizes that he has to do something fast, otherwise Zane could remember who he is, and he'd just be able to undo all the stuff that Vex did, transforming the Never Realm back into the way he was. So Vex is just constantly lying to the Ice Emperor, telling him, hey, this guy, he's a bad person, you should kill him or lock him up. And the Ice Emperor ultimately decides to lock up Lloyd, and this is where Vex realizes that, again, he needs to act fast, otherwise he's not going to be able to keep his control over Zane anymore. Once again, it's something very interesting. We then get another really good moment once Lloyd has been in prison, and Vex is there talking to him. In this moment, once again, Vex has total control of the situation. Lloyd and Kataru, they are locked up in cups made of corrupted ice, preventing them from using their power. And Vex knows how helpless Lloyd is in this moment, considering he's basically just on his own reel. I mean, again, it's just him and Kataru, that's it really in this moment. And Vex pretty much wants to make this known that Lloyd really isn't that good of a situation. And, and that Vex can basically just make the Ice Emperor do whatever he wants, really. And he basically ends up threatening to kill Lloyd, essentially, for getting in his way. Again, it's something interesting to show how Vex is in just so much control when it comes to everything that's going on, and how, if anything, 
he's the real Ice Emperor, not Zane. And finally, the last moment we had a chance to see Vex as General of the Ice Emperor's army is towards the end of the episode Awakenings, and it's during this moment where Vex finally loses control. And something that I really like about this moment is the fact that Vex is actually the one responsible for his own undoing in the end. When it comes to this moment, Vex says the word protect and it causes Zane to remember everything because it's the one thing that Zane would always remember no matter what. He was built to protect those who cannot protect themselves. He may be a robot and a machine, but in his heart, Zane truly is human and he would remember all of this stuff. And so the, Zane is able to remember everything and Vex is ultimately defeated in the end. Putting an end to the true Ice Emperor and Vex only has himself to blame for the situation. Again, I think that's pretty cool. Especially since we don't really see a lot of instances in Ninjago where the villain is the cause of their own downfall in the end. It's just about always the ninja. So again, something pretty cool, honestly. So yeah, when it comes to Vex, I think that he is an absolutely amazing villain. And I just like a lot of stuff about him, his backstory, his connection to the hero, and the deception that was going on when it comes to him, and the fact that he's always in control, and just a lot of stuff going on. Vex, I think, is just the best wild brain villain we have gotten so far and honestly i think that vex is the best post movie villain that we have gotten vex is just such an amazing villain honestly and again he has been the best ninjago villain we have gotten in a long time plus on to mention when it comes to vex he was also able to just pave the way for other great villains we have gotten when it comes to the wild brain era and such as unagami and the skull sorcerer for example and just, I cannot wait to see what new villains we are going to get in the future of Ninjago. And I really, really hope we get a chance to see Vex again. And so that's pretty much all I got for you guys. So tell me down below, what do you guys think? What are your guys' thoughts on Vex? And just say hey, again, tell me what you think. Later guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.